there is not a single individual on the face of the earth who does not have problems. That even applies to those privileged souls who can buy for themselves the perfect environment. Their problems might even be worse. That is why Andrew Ganeki said that rich people seldom smile. This is a universal truth. Nobody escapes difficulty in their lives. Like all the other people on earth, we have our own difficulties, even life-threatening challenges. They're not worse than what others experience. They are merely different and very unique. So here we are in South Africa. For instance, crime in South Africa, it can be said, is out of control. On average, more than 50 people are murdered in South Africa every day. That is worse than in war zone countries. Corruption is deeply entrenched in our society. The majority of children are educated by a failed education system. Unemployment, and in particular youth unemployment, is among the worst in the world. A poor health system is all there is for millions. Racism, with its various tentacles, affects every person in a different way. Our state-owned enterprises are all either bankrupt or dysfunctional or both. ESCOM is a national predicament. Notwithstanding the fact that our taxes are high, the fiscus is drained and many of our municipalities are dysfunctional. Some threaten us that they want to take our stuff. Just the idea paralyzes many of us. We all suffer from a doses of entitlement, some more than others. The president and a few others in government want to fix this. We say they don't move fast enough. We also say if they want us to make a full contribution, they first need to sort this all out. The fact that the president has an extremely difficult task is not our problem. That brings us to the question, what are we going to do if they don't? The bad news is, they are probably not going to sort this out, at least not soon. Not because they don't want to, but because of the enormity of the dilemma. So that paralyzes us and all that's left is to complain. The truth is, while we wait for them to change the circumstances, circumstances are waiting for us to change them. This life presents us with two options. We can wait for others to shape our world according to our own priorities and then blame them if they don't, which of course is the option of the victim. Or we can choose not to wait, but to take ownership in the area of our influence and accept this life as a gift, to be lived to its fullest, a wonderful once-off opportunity playing with the hand I was dealt. You need to understand that, if you allow it, you can find something at every turn of the road that will rob you of life. Therefore, absolutely avoid focusing on these negativities, the things presenting themselves as giants, threatening your life and your progress. You cannot prevail while focusing on your perceived adversaries that will merely paralyze you. Therefore, focus on what is good, right and truthful. Let nothing stand in the way of your doing what you are called to do, living this life to its fullest. Therefore, I must take responsibility for the task I am called for and not waste it as a result of my misplaced expectations of what this life owes me, or as a result of my fears and my hesitations. If I don't, one day I will look back and realize that my fears, my hesitations and my consequent withdrawal from this race was a big mistake. That is when I realized that the things which I deemed as obstacles and used as excuses were actually opportunities but I missed it because it was disguised as adversity. I have to live with the deep realization that this life owes me nothing, because it doesn't. And that fulfillment, progress and success rise in the realm of sacrifice. It's all up to me, not them.